Coming up on the Paper Talk today, we'll be looking at Sergio Regulon. Could United be looking at giving him a permanent deal already? Also, Adrian Rabio. it looks like we're back in for him. Again, what is going on? Is this 2022 all over again? Let's find out. Jay here from Stratford Paddock. This is the Paper Talk. As you can see, we're outside Old Trafford and it's pretty sunny actually nice bit of sunny sunny and share anyway we'll get straight into it uh, loads of stories doing the rounds and it feels like we're in a bit of a time warp is this 2022 or even 2021 because we're linked with adrian rabio again it's like this one always comes around um there's a story here in the express and it's been reported elsewhere as well man united following closely there you go we're not monitoring we're follow following closely that's the new buzzwords um as juventus scrambled to stop 35 million pound star agreeing free transfers uh the free transfers sorry the red devils are reluctant to give up on long standing transfer target long story short adrian rabio is out of contract at the end of the season juventus want to sign him to a new deal united could sign him in january on a pre-agreement i think he's free to sign with clubs in january if he wanted to we're interested in him newcastle united are also interested in him and i think he's been linked with atletico madrid now last summer was it not last not the summer just gone the summer before sorry we were linked with him quite heavily and there was reports that John Murta flew to France or Italy or wherever it was to broker some sort of deal. And apparently Rabiot's, I think it's his mum, was his, is his agent. Is it Dominique? I think her name is. Um, I'm getting the nod from producer Joe. Uh, she wanted more money than United were willing to, to pay. So we didn't end up getting him, but it seems that United are still interested in him. And that deal could happen. I say could happen next summer but we could sign an uh, agreement with him in January because like I said he'll be free to sign something there we'll have to see what happens though but according to the Express Juventus are keen to sign him, sign him to a new deal so they're going to pull out all the stops to keep him so I think this story originated from Calcio Mercato so it's come from them and it's just basically long story short United are following the, the situation closely and still trying to sign their long-term target um i had this story yesterday in my news about marcus rashford being involved in a bit of a car crash following the burnley game nothing to, to worry about he was fine so don't be melodramatic um united have released a statement or a united spokesman is quoted in the manchester evening news he says marcus was involved in a collision with another vehicle on his way home from carrington last night both drivers walked away unhurt no ambulance was required so there you go there's nothing to report there his car's had a bit of a bang. He's fine. That's the main thing. Anyway, um, so let's talk about this story. This has been reported elsewhere, but it seems to have stemmed from the Daily Mail. This is Mike Keegan in the Mail. And it says, uh, Man United raise eyebrows after taking four goalkeepers to Munich. Now you think, right, OK, yeah, we took four goalkeepers to Munich. Bit, bit odd, if we're being brutally honest. It's not what you usually see, but who cares? I mean, that's not the reason we lost the game, is it? If we, you know, we might argue we should, we should have better players available on the bench, but we know we've got about 13 players out injured. So we know the situation there. So we took four keepers. But it's saying here, the eyebrows were raised by Summer Old Trafford when Eric Ten Hag took four goalkeepers to Munich for last week's Champions League clash with Bayern. Agenda understands that's the Daily Mail agenda. Yeah, we all know what the Daily Mail agenda is, don't we? Eh? We don't need to go there. Um, understands that with FFP rules biting following shambolic transfer dealings, some non-football staff have been told they cannot sign off on anything not agree agreed within pre-planned budgets. It's thought the group went for training. It's thought the group, the group of goalkeepers, went for training purposes and still would have done had they not been in the squad. In the case of Radek Vitek, 19, it was also thought that being involved in the matchday experience would stand him in good stead. Those who played had a recovery session the next day while a separate group, including the extra keep keepers, had a regular workout on the grass. Now, the issue here seems to be that because money's tight, that it's cost money to take these people to Munich. Now, I'm pretty sure we can afford to take a couple of extra goalkeepers to Munich. That just literally seems like nothing, a nothing story. Staff were reportedly unhappy about it. We'll get a grip if that's even true, which... I, I doubt. Um, there's an interesting story here about Sergio Regulon. Sergio Regulon, who's gone from a player, I think most of us are going, right, okay, yeah, well, he's just third choice left back. He's an emergency loan signing. Okay, hopefully he can do a job too. He's amazing. What a player. He's showing the kind of effort his teammates should be showing. They should all be ashamed of themselves, build a statue of him. Well, maybe not that emphatic, but he's doing all right, isn't it? Anyway, according to the Express, it says here, Man United hierarchy changing minds on striking permanent deal after Burnley win. 
Manchester United are considering a U-turn on their Sergio Regulon stance amid an impressive start to life at Old Trafford, according to reports. Regulon has started three consecutive games since joining on a season-long loan from Tottenham Hotspur on transfer deadline day. Uh, the Spaniards' performances on the pitch and attitude off it have reportedly earned the plaudits of many figures behind the scenes. According to Spanish outlet AS, Regulon is on the right track to securing a permanent transfer to United at the end of the season. Get involved in the comments. Let us know, do you want to see Sergio Regulon sign a permanent deal at Old Trafford or after three games, are we getting carried away? Is it far too early to sell? I think it is a bit early, isn't it? He's done well, but I think it's a, a, a proper Man United move, wasn't it, if we just went and give him a seven-year deal on 500 grand a week and then he, you know, he turned out to be a bit rubbish because he thinks, I'll oh, sign a new deal now, I can't be bothered anymore, which kind of is our MO here at this club, isn't it? We just sort of hand out massive contracts when someone does all right. Remember Nemanja Matic having a decent 45 minutes against Man City, then getting given a, a four-year deal, whatever it was, at the age of 31 or a three-year deal. All a bit, yeah haphazard at times with our contracts let's just wait wait a little bit and see how he cracks on the line he's doing well so far long may it continue but we do have Luke Shaw and Tyrell Malassia to come back as well so it's not quite panic stations where we need to time down just yet uh, interesting morning the ex uh, sorry the Telegraph talking about Jack Grealish is Manchester United sliding indoors moment as Jaden Sancho remains out in the cold I mean the, the gist of that story is about the fact that at one time it looked like Jaden Sancho was going to be a the, the darling of English football, the, the winger that maybe Gareth Southgate could turn to, hasn't happened for him. Jack Grealish, he's, you know, England fans love him, Southgate likes him, he's just won that treble, albeit with 115 charges hanging over the club's head. And whilst Jadon Sancho, we don't know what's happening for him. Is he even going to play against Crystal Palace? We don't know yet. I don't think he will if he's not been training with the team, but we'll wait and see. When the manager spoke about him before the Burnley game, he didn't give too much away other than to say Sancho is still training on his own so you can make it out what you will but it's just interesting that how their careers have differed when at one time Jadon Sancho I think it's easy to forget just how respected and admired he was in world football everyone was talking about him being the next big thing his numbers were phenomenal United chased him we got him and it just hasn't worked out and now he's in a position where he's not even playing for us is he? Um, Hannibal Medjubay has been getting praised off Eric Ten Hag just a quick couple of stories I'll get through here it says that um, Basically, this is in the mirror. It says Eric Ten Hag reserves special praise for Hannibal Medjury after the youngster impressed in Manchester United's slender win over Burnley. He says, um, you bring players in, they are new, like Regulon, like Hoyland, and you can't bring them in slowly in the routines of your team. They are not used to playing together like Hannibal, who did a perfect job. Hannibal Medjury is one of those players. He's got everything you could want in a midfielder. He can run past players, he can stick a foot in, he's, he can score goals, he can pick out a pass. He's just... He's a little bit off his head, right? We've watched him in the 23s, we've seen him in Academy. He's one of them who is capable of scoring a world day and then getting sent off for a completely horrendous tackle or for arguing with a referee or for waving imaginary yellow cards. He loves a bit of that. But he's doing well, long may it continue, because if Eric Tenard can get a tune out of him like he has been, then Hannibal Medjubic could be a massive star for Manchester United Football Club. I'm going to leave it there anyway. The sun is shining. Make sure you are hitting like, share and subscribe. We've got an absolute smorgasbord of content coming for you today. You've got the preview for the Crystal Palace Carabao Cup game. You've got Premier League P-Take with Adam McCola and Joe Smith, of course. That'll be here. Plus, as well, you'll have the Paddock Podcast with myself and Joe, where we're going to be talking about VAR, eh? It's uh, more like a VAR-sickle. Ass, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Anyway, we'll be getting shafted, aren't we, by it? So we'll get into all that. So make sure you're hitting like, share and subscribe. I'm Jay Motte. This has been The Paper Talk. Thanks for watching.